Good hit by Anthony Bridges, again number 21. Right on the spot. He would play number 85 as the intended pass receiver. Anthony Bridges, a tough corner, 5'9", 165. Seven interceptions this season. third down and AM still needs about 14 yards to pick up the first to Smith and circled out of the backfield for the reception. And Johnny Frost, the middle linebacker, read the play from the start and was right there to make the tackle on Smith, the fullback. Was it a forward pass or what? I think that was Smith. Etron Smith will take it to midfield. Will not be enough for the first down, but it's Joe Johnson who hit him from behind and knocked the ball loose. Well, that's the kind of night it's been for Louisville. Joe Johnson with a big play, number 94. Sacks the quarterback, knocks the ball to Tommy Preston's hands. Good pass rush by Joe Johnson. He just never gives up. Now causes the fumble, but the way the bounces have gone tonight for AM, it bounces right to Detron Smith, number 44, and he picks up yardage. So James Bennett with an opportunity to punt with the wind for a change. You see a few umbrellas are still in existence here as the sprinkles have started again. Good hanging kick will bound at the 10 and Aggies can't get there. It will be touched back and back to the 20. Well, this is what's on schedule for tomorrow. NFL game day begins at noon Eastern time. No Sunday is complete without it. And tomorrow's top stories, rookie versus veteran, new star Willie Roth of the Saints, and his biggest test, well, he'll go up against Reggie White. And then a veteran quarterback released this past week. We'll visit Cleveland and find out why they let Bernie Kosar go. In NFL primetime, 7 o'clock Eastern time, all the day scores and highlights, including the second place Raiders meeting the front-running Chiefs in the AF FC West. And then tomorrow evening, it's the Bears and the Chargers. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That is our full Sunday schedule here on ESPN. Breaks it out over the 30-yard line. That's going to be a gain of close to 10 on the play as Kenny is there defensively. You look at a couple. You look at a score there. Youngstown State, the leading team in Division One Double A, falls. Then Marshall, the number two team, gets beat. But Ron, two big plays. The fourth down play in the first half, where they overthrew the ball to Jamie Arch Asher. That was one. And then the second play, where Ralph Dawkins was out of bounds and came back in and uh, made the catch. Two big plays that went against Louisville. Or are you right? Because momentum-wise, the, the long strike to, uh, to Dawkins could have been huge in this game as far as the momentum. Dawkins this time goes for a short one. Here's another update out west. Fresno State 42-7 over Hawaii. And that's with 327 left in the third. I thought after your game on Thursday night that there were no touchdowns left in that conference. But <laughs> well, Lavelle Edwards is sitting home tonight, and he has to have a smile on his face because with Wyoming going to New Mexico and losing, he is in great shape to win the WAC and make a trip to the Holiday Bowl. And he lost four games in a row, so all of a sudden, BYU is back. And Howard Snellenberger is looking forward to the Liberty Bowl. Had a fine season. Tough night tonight. But when he took the job, Ron, they interviewed him. They said, how long do you think it's going to take to get this program back? He said, 15 years. <laughs> First guy I've ever seen say 15 years. Usually you say five, four. And how 
Howard has a good record. He said 15 years, and he's brought this program back a lot quicker than 15 years. But the thing that you also have to do, I mentioned that uh, he, he said his players know college baseball because they were here last year. But when you come to a place like this to play two years in a row, there's a pretty good percentage that you're going to come away with two losses because this is a, an extremely tough last week, 96, 97,000 in Knoxville to play an awfully good Tennessee team. But that's what you have to do when you're in the process of getting that program to another plateau. Louisville's done a good job. Their basketball uh, program, uh, their athletic director, Bill Olson, a trading basketball game. Teams would call over and say, we want to play in basketball. He'd say, okay, we're playing basketball, but you're going to play us in football also. Well, that's, that's how they got their schedule, Ron. I mean, they were able to put people on the schedule. Isn't it hunting season in this time? Yeah, deer yeah. season. Uh, hunting cardinal tonight, but I mean, it is hunting season. He said that they thought the crowd would be down tonight, and he said, why? And he said hunting season, but I don't think anybody went hunting tonight, except on the field. There are a few that are watching this game from uh, hunting cabins around this state, I would imagine, Mike. This off the side of the foot, but you're right, it doesn't look like too many did. And uh, they hunted cardinals extremely well tonight. By the way, we mentioned early on in the telecast that uh, R.C. Slocum in the morning with an administrative group from Texas A&M will hop on a plane and fly to Kansas City and uh, go in front of the NCAA. Uh, and, you know, this has been hanging around now for 11 months at this school. And with the fate of this program actually uh, in, in jeopardy, I guess you'd have to say, uh, you know, winning, R.C. says, has become secondary. We'll get that interview here in just a second after they run this first play. Straight ahead with Smith. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. And here's a part of that interview that uh, we shot yesterday. The one thing that I had taken the most pride in, and I think our people had, is that we were winning, but we were winning the right way and winning uh, by the rules. So uh, still, to me, the winning doesn't, uh, winning this season, uh, doesn't uh, do it all for, for me and, and for uh, the people that are close and associated with him. Uh, uh, this has overshadowed the winning, I would say. Uh, you know, the old thing of just win, everything be okay. Uh, that's, that's not true at all. Uh, to me, uh, winning and having some dignity about the way you win, uh, that means a whole lot. So in the morning, uh, R.C. and uh, the group from Texas A&M will, will journey up to Kansas City. The most difficult thing about this, Mike, is the fact that 11 months is an awfully long time for the thing to have been drawn out. And it seems like rather than talk about football at every media day, uh, before every football game and after, it's still, it was there. And it's been present for the players as well. The suspensions have been served. The players have paid back the money. Cotton Bowl rings were taken away. Uh, but... Was there lack of institutional control is one of the things that uh, they have to explain tomorrow to the NCAA, which could cost them scholarships and, uh, and they could get a probation out of it. The pass is complete at the 46. As a coach, Ron, you do everything in your power to run it the right way and within the rules, and that's the frustration that R.C. Slocum's talking about. He feels like he has done that. He has run the program the right way. So we'll see what happens. You know, one of the things that has been difficult in living in this part of the country for almost 25 years is this conference has undergone the tightest scrutiny. They have been under a microscope for as long as I can remember down here. Part of it has been brought on by themselves, but the other part, I just think it's extremely difficult. As the corner is turned and he's down to the 35 and now the 34 yard line. But I guess the point that I'm making, I don't think that college football is rotten by any means, but I can promise you this. If the rest of college football was put under the same microscope by the media and by the NCAA that the Southwest has been under, I think there'd be a few more victims. And sometimes I wonder, you know, how far things should go because there are now eight professional teams in this state. And when Southwest Conference teams get publicity, it's not always positive by any shape of the imagination. Every Saturday night, you and I look at rosters and the kids from Texas who are key players on other rosters. And they're leaving because of the name. It's a great move by McElroy as he'll take it to the 21-yard line. Kamalo 
comes over to make the stop. We're getting back to football. Leland McElroy, R.C. Slocumson, reminds him a lot of Marshall Falk out at uh, San Diego State. So he's built like him. He feels like he runs like him. Anthony Bridges misses the tackle, number 21, but Leland McElroy makes you miss. One thing happened to Leland tonight that he will put in his uh, in his uh, notebook, and that's he got a headgear in the in the ear hole earlier that, that sent him to the sidelines. It's okay, obviously, but it's something you have to learn. This is Wallace, the ball carrier. He gets tripped up as he tries to make the turn, and maybe a gain of one. Well, Mike, here are the numbers on the three running backs, Hill, Thomas, and McElroy. 18 carries for Hill, 12 for Thomas, and 8 for McElroy. see it hit, and he's going to lose yardage. Gaines grabs him around the ankles. And we are now under five minutes left in the ball game. Another fine play by Joe Johnson, the outstanding defensive end of Louisville. He just continues to play. Ty Smith, the defensive coordinator, said just he can be as good as he wants to be. 6'3", 250. Thomas and Hill standing together on the sideline. Their work is done for the evening. Oh my goodness. Had his opportunity there. And Clay was open and the ball sailed just a bit. He just got a little excited when he looked up and saw Hayward Clay number 85 running free <laughs> and just put too much underneath it. but also on the left side of the offensive line there was movement as well. I would think R.C. feels like he's had enough. Good ball. Ball starts. Offense. Still fourth down. Three thirty six left to play, A and M forty two to seven. One tackle, and now it's going to be finished off at the 29. Cavallo is the man who makes the stop, and the Louisville Cardinals will take it over. And Louisville has a player down at the 31. On the Coast Guard Academy, won 31 to 23 today, which is like the Army Navy game for the Coast Guard. They beat Kings Point 31 23, and a big win for the Coast Guard Academy under Bill Smiths. Two players shaken up, Frost and also Roscoe. So let's take a timeout. 3.28 left to play. Turn it up. Portable stereos devour power. But the music goes on and on with Railback Renewal, a new kind of alkaline battery created to be reusable. They outlive those bunny batteries because they're reusable 25 times or more. They outperform old-fashioned rechargeables because you get alkaline power in every charge. More power, more music. That's the power of Renewal from Railback. You might expect Lexus to unveil our latest line of cars after inspecting them once or twice or perhaps three times but each of our cars must pass inspection on over 100 items 
And after that, they're covered by a special limited warranty. Announcing Lexus Certified Pre-Owned Cars. Only at your Lexus dealer. Ready for your inspection. Strike it rich in oil. Yeehaw! Pep Boys Multiway, just 88 cents. Come to Pep Boys and drive away happy. Imagine a cold tablet that keeps symptoms from coming back 24 hours. New Epidac 24. Sudafed lasts 6 hours, Tavis D12. But one Epidac gives consistent relief 24 hours. Epidac keeps cold symptoms from coming back. Well, there you see the score in tonight's Visa. Players of the game are from Louisville, Anthony Bridges. 11 tackles, 8 of those solo. And for Texas A&M, it is Aaron Glenn. One interception, and he scored on that. As a part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. up immediately following the ball game, the residents in college football scoreboard. <laughs> Oklahoma with a big win today over cross-state rival Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has been a while since they have won in Norman. Oklahoma with the big game remaining with Nebraska. Calvin Arrington, the ball carrier now, as both clubs beginning to substitute beyond what our depth chart has uh, has been showing, giving them an opportunity to play tonight in a game that is uh, over for all intents and purposes. Uh, three minutes is what we have left. Ron Louisville has one game remaining in the regular season versus Tulsa at Tulsa on November 25th. Texas A&M, of course, plays at TCU on the 20th, and then we're back here for the shootout with John Makovic in Texas on November 25th. Jeff Brom standing on the sideline. Mike, he got the extra year. You did that ball game against Tennessee. He broke his leg. Broke what? his leg. Uh, unfortunate. Well, I, I like him. I like his chances mm -hmm. to, to go in the NFL. As you look at the defensive coaches of AM. You saw Sam Adams uh, on the sideline getting a well-deserved rest. One of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award uh, down in Houston to be given later. Now Texas comes in. Thanksgiving night. Play a game. Beats a &M. Still third day. Do they win the Southwest Conference? They knock them off in head-to-head -head competition, and Texas has one conference loss. They still have Bader to play, though. There's still yeah. some yeah, water to go some, under the bridge yeah. yet. But one of those teams will be eliminated from goal competition next week, either Bader or Texas. So uh, they can't be thinking about AM. The ball carry going to be hit in the backfield and knocked down. It's fourth down. Texas does have to win out to go to a bowl game because they won't have enough wins unless they win out. Right. They spanked TCU today. Billy Mitchell this time. It's a good kick into the wind. Takes a big Louisville bounce and is going to go down to the 20-yard line.
it takes you to another level. You feel like you're floating on air. The competition is so thick and so tight that you can cut it with a knife. National championship game between one and two is nothing compared to this. Sam Adams, who's a junior, talking about the rivalry with the Texas Longhorns, the 100th meeting. And we will be here at Kyle Field in College Station a week from Thursday evening, Thanksgiving night for that matchup. How many of those 100 of you have been uh, in attendance? <laughs> Quite a few. 50, 60, <laughs> not that many. Shane Anthony, the ball carrier there. Number 10, Stormy Case, who holds an extra points and field goals, has come into the lineup at quarterback, and he's getting an opportunity. As the clock runs down to 37, and now 36. side doesn't get out of bounds and that probably will be the final play of this ball game Howard Schnellenberger heading to the middle of the field for a handshake with R.C. Slocum two seconds down to one and that's it from Kyle Stadium in College Station Texas for the final score Texas A&M 42 and Louisville 7 from Mike Godfrey to Adrian Preston in our ESPN crew. This is Rob Franklin saying good night, everybody. The college football school board is next. Okay, Ron, thank you very much. So the Aggies come up with a big win at home looking impressive, and Louisville goes on the road back-to-back -back weeks, losing big at Tennessee and tonight at Texas A&M. We welcome you to the Residence Inn College Football Scoreboard Show. The uh, four horsemen, if you will, are out in South Bend still. We'll go to them live for some of their reaction on the day. As we move along, let's uh, get you up to date on what's going on right now in college football. Starting uh, in the WAC, where Hawaii and Fresno State are going at it, and Fresno State led this game 28-0 early, and uh, it's been comfortable leading now over Hawaii by 32 points so Fresno State will stay alive in the WAC race a WAC race where now BYU has the inside track also going on in college football right now Colorado State in conference leading UTEP 28-0 as Anthony Hill continues to add a big day EJ Watson also two touchdown runs for Colorado State North Carolina has uh, one that's now a final at the Superdome beating Tulane Mac Brown going back to where he coached at Tulane and beating Tulane by 32 if things work out right Mac may get a chance to play there again in the Sugar Bowl. But that's a long way and a lot of things have to happen before that. San Jose State hosting UNLV. A desperate situation for San Jose State in terms of the Big West where the conference leaders have one loss. San Jose in conference has two. Right now they lead the throwing Rebs by four. As for Notre Dame, Florida State. What? A million words spoken about this game? A thousand predictions? And one against two came down to one play. The highlights in South Bend. The showdown early in the tunnel. The Irish meeting the Seminoles before they take the field. Tied at seven in the second. Lee Becton explodes for a 26-yard score, and the Irish take a 14-7 lead. To the fourth quarter, it's 24-17 Irish. And Jeff Burris, one of his two touchdown runs from short distance, 31-17. Knowles do not die. Charlie Ward brings them back. Brian McGee is going to get a couple of mitts on the ball, but deflect it right into the waiting arms of Kez McCorvey. In the end zone, it's a seven-point game. After a defensive hold and a very short punt, Florida State takes over. No timeouts. Ward drives the field, gets to McCorvey at the 14. One play for the win, or at least a chance to set up the win. And Bobby said he'd go for two if they got it in the end zone on this play, but Charlie Ward was denied as Notre Dame sent eight back in coverage. Against the five in the pattern for Florida State, and Ken Alexander and company denied their comeback win. Absolutely. Notre Dame, number one. As they beat Florida State by seven in a tremendously exciting game this afternoon in South Bend. Here's Chris Fowler. How that Notre Dame? Chris. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Bino Cook alongside, as well as Lee Corso and Craig James. Hey, guys, nice to see a game build as game of the century live up to the hype. Yeah. I want to recall the, the preseason time when Lou Holtz said anybody who thought Notre Dame had a good team or a great team should get a saliva test. He's going to owe a lot of writers <laughs> a free dinner at the restaurant of their choice because Notre Dame is going to finish in the top ten, Bino. Well, look, uh, I want to thank Notre Dame and uh, Florida State for 
getting our mind off NAFTA. I mean, that's all week <laughs> NAFTA, and now we have this football game. And let me tell you something about Notre Dame. In the next four years, they're going to win the national title at least twice, <laughs> and Ron Paulus will win the Heisman Trophy at least twice. He will be the greatest quarterback in the history of Notre Dame. That's what a lot of the coaches and the fans yes. believe. Speaking of NAFTA, Perot and Gore, our own debate team here, what do you guys think? Well, first of all, Notre Dame, if I was going to give two game balls today, I'd give one defensive coordinator, Rick Mentor, the great plan he did, and offensive line coach, Joe Moore. They won the ball game up front, and they deserve those game balls. What really blows me away is, is Notre Dame may win a national championship this season, and this is a team that's in transition. Lou Holtz deserves to be a true candidate for coach of the year. He's not even a finalist on the writer's ballot, which makes the award itself a joke. Notre Dame, of course, one game coming up with Boston College next week. We'll talk about that when we continue. Also, there were some other games, we're told, around the country. We'll get to those. Mike Tirico will have some highlights coming up. And UCLA, well, in the Rose Bowl race, it was critical for the Bruins. They went into a tough game with the Sun Devils, and I'll show you how it came out for the Bruins. Our final score, Aggies win it convincingly. No matter how many little surprises life throws your way, there's one thing you can count on. The comfort of a Tempstar heating and cooling system. Find out how you can rely on Tempstar. Call for your nearest Tempstar dealer today and learn about reliable Tempstar heating and cooling. You'll also get this free brochure. Your Tempstar dealer is your home comfort specialist. Call them today and get comfort you can count on. Rely on the star. Tempstar. Ready? Yeah. This quality time was made possible by GMAC. With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. Well, what'd you think? Can we go again? GMAC, the expressway home. Ready? Yeah. This may seem like any other day, but it's not. Because now people will be able to talk to one another in a brand new way. That's because across the U.S. and Canada, leading cellular communications companies have joined together to create MobileLink, a new standard in cellular service. So now, whenever you need to stay in touch, MobileLink will make it as simple as a phone call. MobileLink. Hello? I'm glad you called. It's simply the way to communicate. To order, call 1-800-995-4000. Residents in, we've tried to create an atmosphere that's very close to the one you left behind. Hi, honey, I'm home. Have we gone too far? Residents in by Marriott. The next best thing to home. This college football scoreboard is presented by Residents in by Marriott. The Extended Stay Hotel. Aggies win by 35 sports center at the bottom of the hour, but let's take you through the rest of the day in college football, starting in the Pac-10. Some folks said UCLA was playing the best ball in the country. Seven straight wins, a win over Arizona State today, Southern Cal next week, and UCLA is going to the Rose Bowl. What about J.J. Stokes? Could they get him the ball? Rob Walker in a quarterback for the injured Wayne Cook. Not there. Dan Lucas, the pick, and go into the end zone. 31-yard touchdown. Botched snap on the extra point. Walker, three interceptions in this game. And Arizona State salted away with a time-consuming ground drive led by Mario Bates. 28 carries for a buck 52. And Arizona State beats UCLA by six. Putting Southern Cal in very good position. Why? Well, earlier, Southern Cal taking on Washington. Napoleon Kaufman here, a 12-yard run, and the Huskies were up 10-7. But the Trojans answer right back. Rob Johnson swing it to Sean Walters. Two-yard score for Walters, who had two TV, two D, two TDs, he said, on the day. In the second quarter, the Huskies were in some trouble as Dion Struther was working down the sidelines. That screen gets it to the one. Now watch the next play. He'll take it up and over the top, part of his 117 yards total on the day. That was the winning score. The Trojans beat Washington by 5, 22-17. SC with a tie or a win next week over UCLA will go to the Rose Bowl. Why? Because Arizona, which was also in the three-way first place tie, 
Let Cal score the last 24 points. Eric Zomal at the interception at the end to win it for the Bears in Berkeley. Also in conference, Oregon is eliminated from bowl contention as they lose to Stanford. These teams combined for 793 yards passing, 94 combined yards rushing. That's the Pac-10 picture. Now the Big Ten picture. As far as Ohio State, they have been in some slippery situations in the last few weeks, able to slip by. Found themselves in the same place against Indiana late in the game. Chris Ditto got the start for Bill Mallory's team. John Pacey, the normal starter, had a jammed shoulder. Down 10-3, Ditto to Thomas Lewis. Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Last week, a 28-yard score here. All tied at 10. John Cooper's Buckeyes break the tie. Bobby Hoying and Brett Powers' effective tandem at quarterback. Powers off the bench to lead a crucial scoring drive again. Here to Buster Tillman, five yards in the end zone. And the Buckeyes, or they at least clinch a share of the Big Ten title and can get it outright if they beat Michigan. By the way, fans rushed the field after the game. Chemicals were sprayed, but no arrests and fortunately, no injuries. Part of the rest of the conference, Penn State getting Mike Archie to do the damage on the ground. 134 yards, beating Illinois by 14. Tyrone Wheatley, three scores. Tamanga Bianca Patuka, two scores. Michigan all over Minnesota, seen earlier on ESPN. Michigan State had a close one against Purdue at a rally at ross Age Stadium. Michigan State could very well still be in line to face Louisville in the Liberty Bowl. And Iowa, believe it or not, at 5-5 five and 2-5 five and two and five in the conference, still has bowl hopes alive with their win over Northwestern. What about the story for the Bulls and the Pack in the Big Ten? Chris? All right, Mike, we can put the Big Ten Rose Bowl race to bed. The John Cooper watch is over, at least until the Michigan game. You know, reminds me. Meanwhile, guys, in the Pac-10, kudos to John Robinson in his first year back in the second tenure. The Trojans are playing very, very well. They could have packed it in after a heartbreaking loss at Penn State, a blowout here at Notre Dame, a blowout at Arizona. They didn't pack it in. But what does it tell you about the Rose Bowl? When USC could go to the Rose Bowl with four losses... Boy, things have really changed. And I'll tell you another thing. John Cooper, congratulations. This is not your first Rose Bowl. People forget he took Arizona State to the Rose Bowl also. You know, I look at the Pac-10, and I am blown away that UCLA only scored three points today. Apparently, the UCLA defense did their job. They held them to nine points. Wayne Cook, without him playing, you now know that J.J. Stokes didn't do all of that on his own. Stokes is a great receiver, but you've got to have the quarterback. We'll talk about that UCLA-USC game a little bit later on. What it tells you about the Pac-10 with a four-loss team going is that <laughs> that team didn't quit going after the uh, conference schedule. And also, the conference is pretty balanced. Top to bottom, I think the best conference in the country. Not just, you know, uh, Lee, uh, Greg, and I uh, that's that. voted down. We'll talk about that <laughs> later on. More scores and highlights ahead on the show. Hey, Auburn, really a big story today. Besides the game here, the Tigers, game down between the hedges, a major, major story. Mike returns with scores and highlights. This man just woke up in a residence in hotel room. What are his options? He can A, make a cup of fresh coffee in the kitchen. B, walk all the way over to the living room area and start a fire in the fireplace. Or C, shoot some hoops. Okay, let's see what he does. Ah, uh, D, none of the above. Residence in by Marriott, the next best thing to home. Where there was once only a place to sit, there's now a convenient place to relax. Where there was once only unusable space, there's now an ingenious storage system of interchangeable bins, trays, and cargo netting. Where there was once only upholstery, there's now a place for an office. And where there was once only a truck, there's now Dodge Ram, Motor Trend's truck of the year. Flex Control, the first electric shaver with a pivoting head. Flex Control automatically adjusts to every contour of your face. Under the chin, under the lip, that tricky spot under your nose. You'll get the closest bronze shave yet. Flex Control from Braun, the last word in shavers. Driver, do you have any Bud Light in your vehicle? Yes. And I am Mr. Gally Weekich. You mean Dr. Galakowicz? Yes, I am. <laughs> this is so cool! First time in a limo? Doctor? In a limo.